hello hello everyone welcome back to the channel my name is miss coffee and today we are doing a whip and chat whip stands for work in progress so whatever that is for you get it out and work along with me as i tell you some stories from the coffee house shenanigans now i hope you all had a wonderful wonderful weekend i know i did i will tell you all about it if i can get through the first couple of stories i want to talk to you about so in the household of coffee this weekend we celebrated a birthday now you're probably wondering like hold up which one of your kids none of your kids have birthdays in like april or may is may um so we celebrated killian jones's birthday so i figured since you guys just got the story of the kids and their birth stories i don't have a birth story for killian obviously because i didn't give birth to him he's actually right here um but I don't have a birth story for Killian, but I have a gotcha story. And I can tell you a little bit about how it was to raise Killian. Um, so for those of you who are new to my channel, again, hey, I'm Miss Coffee. Killian Jones is my six-year-old Siberian Husky. He just turned six um, on the 15th. And it's funny because I didn't realize it until today, which today is Monday that I'm recording this, that the ferret's birthday is May 16th. So on top of Killian Jones having a birthday on the 15th, which was yesterday, the ferret's birthday is today. So today the ferrets are officially a year old. I obviously got the ferrets when they were a few months old. So yeah, so we're going to talk about the ferrets and the doggo. So first we're going to start off with the Killian Jones. He seems to be the crowd favorite on my channel. So if you again don't know, Killian Jones is my six-year-old Siberian Husky. He is Killian Jones. So let's talk about it. So what made me get Killian Jones? Killian Jones, um, I actually never wanted a Husky just because I've seen too many videos and the way my life is set up, I have a mouth on me already, okay? Like I already have an attitude problem. I don't need something else in my house with an attitude problem. And I have two girls who also have attitudes. Again, I don't need anything else in my house that has an attitude. Well, when Mr. Coffee was living here, um... So for those who don't know, my husband lived in North Dakota without us for five years. Then he moved us out here because we got tired of being, you know, separated. So um, while he was gone, um, I got Achilles. Then a year later, I got Daisy. And then a year after that, I was like, I want another dog. The dogs are pretty much for, were for protection because I live by myself and I had the kids with me. So if something ever happened, which... We did have a break-in once whenever we lived in PA. Uh, we had a break-in, but luckily I had Daisy and I had Achilles. And Achilles essentially was found down the street with the guy uh, on the ground. And he was still on the guy's Achilles tendon, which is why his name was Achilles. Um, he liked to bite ankles. I don't know what his problem was. He, you know, had lots of problems. Anyways, moving right along. So I'm sitting there and I decided, you know, I wanted to get another dog. Now, at this point, Daisy was about a year old. I was training her. I was training Achilles. And I was like, this is super easy. I wouldn't mind having one more dog. Um, I was telling Mr. Coffee about it. And he's like, we don't need any more dogs. And I'm like, you don't live here, sir. I live here. I want another doggo. Now, I should have listened to Mr. Coffee. Don't ever tell him that I said that. But I didn't listen to Mr. Coffee. Plus, if I had, how fun would my stories be without the Killian Jones? Anyways, moving right along. So... I told Mr. Coffee I wanted to get another dog. And he was like, we don't, seriously, we don't need another dog. And I'm like, okay, how can, how do you get your spouse to let you get something that they say you don't need? You get something that they like, right? <laughs> so Mr. Coffee had always talked about wanting a Siberian Husky, but not just any Siberian Husky. He wanted a Siberian Husky that had blue eyes and was black and white. And I was like, oh, I can probably, you know, find me a Siberian Husky like that. Well, we had a breeder that we had gotten, uh, we had, we had got a breeder in our town. And so I went to the breeder to see what kind of dogs that they had. And sure enough, they had Siberian Huskies. Well, the Siberian Huskies that they had didn't have blue eyes. They had brown eyes or they would have like one blue eye, one brown eye. And so I was like, I need a Husky with blue eyes. And the guy was like, okay, now take it. It took me two months to talk Mr. Coffee into letting me get this dog. And I told him it was going to be a surprise for him. This was going to be his dog. And, you know, he can love on it whenever he came home. And then if we ever moved out there with him, because we weren't sure at the time if we were going to be moving with him or not. 
But if we ever did move out with him, it'd be his dog. He can do whatever he wants with the dog, you know, because he's always wanted a Siberian Husky. I always wanted a bigger dog, so I got Daisy. And then the kids kind of commandeered her. And then Achilles, he was just a rescue. I just happened to see him on a yard sale site. He looked sad, and I, I went, immediately went and got him. Um, so I'm sitting there, and it took me a couple of months to get Mr. Coffee talked into it. He goes, well, you're the one that's living there, so if that happens, you're going to be the one that has to take care of him because I'm not going to be around to take care of him, blah, 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 which was Mr. Coffee's biggest concern. And I'm like, well, it's not like you take care of anybody else in the house anyways anyway. Like, he, was, he wasn't living with us. I'm like, what do you think I was going to do with the doll? Put it in ice until you got home and then thaw it out? Like, of course I had to take care of the doll. So I, I call myself being slick, and I was like, you know, yeah, I want to get another dog. And, you know, I'll, 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 I didn't tell him I was going to go for the dog he's always wanted. I just said I wanted another dog. And so when I went looking, like I said, the guy said he only had one husky with blue eyes. The rest of them had brown eyes and there was one with one brown, one blue. That freaks me out. I don't like the multicolor eye thing. Um, I actually have my sister-in-law's sister has a few kids and her, my sister-in-law, her sister has blue eyes. Not sure how it happened. Yes, she is a woman of color, but somehow she has blue eyes. It's it's uncommon that you see black people with blue eyes. So, you know, when I first saw her, I was like, oh my God, what happened to you? Um, <laughs> but she has, I think, three boys and her three boys. One of them has blue eyes. One of them has one blue, one black, brown eye. And then I think one of them has like half a blue, half a brown eye, and then one brown eye. And I'm like, yeah, look, listen, I love y'all. But your family freaks me out. So I don't do the multicolor eye thing. I don't care if you're human, dog. I don't care what it is. I don't do the two-color eye thing. So I was like, yeah, I don't want that one. And he was like, well, I don't know if you would want this other one. Because he's like, he's pretty sassy. And I'm like, okay. Well, when I went to go take a look at Killian, he was. He looked like somebody had shit in his Wheaties. He looked angry. And I was like, what's wrong with this dog? Why is he so angry? He's such a cute little puppy. He had this cute little face that said, I will steal all of your stuff and your heart. Like, just take me home and I'll show you. And I was like, I want this puppy here. And the guy goes, are you sure? Because again, he, he might be a sassy one. And I'm like, he will do perfect. So my friend Bobby, who uh, was a friend of mine that lived in PA, she came with me to get him because I was like, I need somebody to hold the puppy in the car while I go get it because I don't remember where my kids were. I think they were at home or possibly at school or something. Uh, so my friend goes with me to go get it. And this is the same friend that her daughter's uh, three months older than Maggie. Yeah, she three, uh, her daughter's three months older than Maggie. And so she comes with me, which is why I knew the kids had to be in school because... Uh, there's no way we were traveling somewhere to go get a dog if, and there's no kids in the car. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right. So my friend grabs the puppy and the puppy, like she has a big chest, like she has big chesticles. Okay. So the Killian buries his face in her, her chest. And she's like, oh, he's so sweet. He's loving on me. I'm like, I think he's molesting you, but all right, moving right along. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll take this one. So the guy goes, okay, he pulls out all the paperwork, he gives me his shot records, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, we get the puppy into the car. The moment we start to drive off is the first time we got to hear Killian make a noise. And he just kind of made this, like, the pump, the puppy grunting noise. like, And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> what was that? Like, it was so little and it, it didn't sound like hardly anything. And I was just like, sorry, there's a ferret underneath my chair. I want to make sure he doesn't. Gumball's gotten kind of nippy lately. Anyways, so I wanted to make sure he was okay. So I like look over at him and he's making like this angry face. And I'm like, I can't tell if he's making an angry face at me or if that's just how his face looked. Killian Jones had the cutest resting bitch face I have ever seen in my entire life. And I was just like, oh my God, he's so cute. Jordan's going to love him. We get him home and my friend puts him down because she's holding him the entire time. She's already fallen in love with this dog. And she puts him down and he immediately drops a deuce right there in the middle of the floor. Just immediately did a did an AH in the middle of my floor. And I was like, mother chicken. So I go over and try to like, you know, tell him, no, no that's bad. Don't do that. And he just kind of looked at me and then peed on my foot. And I was like, 
are you fucking kidding me right now? Like he literally, I'm telling him, no, I'm reprimanding him for pooping at like right as, after he finished. So he knew what he was getting fussed at about. He then walks over to me like he's about to love up on me, cocks his leg up and pees on me. And I'm like, you mother, <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> and so not shortly after that, I knew it was about time for Mr. Coffee to call. So I was like, all right, well, he'll be calling soon. So, you know, I'm going to take the dogs outside, let them run around, let them meet the puppy and see how they do. And where I used to live, uh, we had a closed in backyard and we all, it was also a duplex, kind of like what I live in now. And my neighbor was just getting home from work and he's like, Hey, how's it going? And I'm like, it's going. I did something today. And he's like, what would you do? So I show him the puppy. He goes, oh God, not another one. I'm like, yes, another one. My my neighbor was the one that helped me, uh, that one that came home. He was one of the ones that helped me get Daisy whenever I got Daisy. So he was he, he already knew what was about to happen. And so I'm sitting there and I had the puppy. We had a window in our kitchen and I didn't want to just put the puppy outside with the dogs. So I put the puppy on the window sill. And let the dogs come up. And uh, Daisy was big enough at that point that she could jump up on the windowsill outside. And she did. And she went and started sniffing the puppy and was, like, looking at the puppy. And the puppy's like, meow, meow, at her. And she's just kind of, like, looking at me like, Mom, what did you bring in here? What is this thing? Well, then Achilles took immediately to to Killian. Like, immediately was, like, daddy mode. Because Killian, uh, if y'all didn't know, Achilles is a boy. And he immediately went into father mode and was showing him how to like jump off stuff and, and dig holes and all kinds of fun stuff. And they got along just fine. Now, for some reason, it's not that Daisy didn't get along with Killian. Daisy wanted nothing to do with Killian. <laughs> Daisy was like, okay, if you're playing over here, then I'm going to the other side and you can, you can handle whatever you need to do over here. And Killian would follow her around. She hated it. <laughs> she hated it. Um, so I was like, all right. And then, like, I guess it was like a day, uh, not not a day later, like a few hours later, Mr. Coffee calls. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I kind of need your help on something because we hadn't given the puppy a name yet. And he goes, well, what do you need help on? I'm like, I need you to help me name something. And he's like, if you pull a baby out of somewhere, I'm going to, I'm like, where would I pull a baby out? Please explain. Like Mr. Coffee's biggest concern was there better not be no baby. What baby? Like, where's this baby come? You've been gone for like five months. Where's a baby coming from? So I was like, I don't have any babies besides the two that we've already created. Um, but I have this and I picked up Killian and put him in the camera Immediately, Mr. Coffee falls in love. He's immediately trying to find a way to book a ticket home so he can come see this puppy. Oh my God, it's the dog I always wanted. He was so excited. And then uh, he was like, hi there, buddy. He goes, so I can name it whatever I want. I'm like, this is your dog. I'm going to let you name him whatever you want. And I will take care of him until we're back together again. And he goes, okay, I got it. And I was like, okay, well, that was kind of quick. You don't want to take time to think about it? He goes, no. I was like, okay. He goes, his friend had gotten him into a show. I want to say the show is called Once Upon a Time. And in the show, it's supposed to be about real life Disney characters. And one of the characters name was Captain Hook. And so he goes, he looks like Captain Hook from Once Upon a Time. So can I name him Killian Jones? And I'm like, I'm sorry, say what now? Why do I continuously let the men in my life name things? I don't know. I'm not bright, okay? These are things we know about Miss Coffee moving around well. So I'm like, you want to name this dog Killian Jones? His nickname can't be Kill because he looks so angry. And he's like, that's why he's so cute. He's so angry. He's like, take a picture and send it to me. Like every day. Every day until that man got home. I don't think he got home for another month. Every day he would make him make me send him pictures of this dog, okay? He finally comes home after about, like I said, I think it was about a month. And all you could, all, all I could hear is because the moment Killian laid eyes on him, he fell in love. And so, like, when Mr. Coffee came home that first time after getting Killian, all I can hear in my head is, 
people, let me tell you about my best friend. And I'm like, oh, here we go. He he would hold the puppy all the time. He was eating, the puppy was eating with him. And he he never wanted to put the puppy down. Like, he always wanted to hold this goddamn on puppy. And I'm like, this puppy is going to turn into a dog real quick. And you ain't going to be able to hold that dog like you holding this puppy. And he goes, so let me enjoy the little bit of time I have before he grows. They grow. I'm like, did you even say hi to your children? Like, there was many times where I would have to remind him, hey, hey, you know you've only been home for like two days and you, you, you didn't say hi to the kids today. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, I just, well, do you think they want to come play with the puppy with me? I'm like, nobody wants to play with the puppy with you. At that point, we had been home with that dog for a month. We are We were over it, okay? Because let me tell you about the first few months of having this dog. I'll go back to my story, that part of it anyways. So maybe if he must have been a few weeks old. And there's one story that in particular that sticks it in my head. I want to say he was a couple of weeks or no, he had to be a couple of months old. Because when I got him, I got Killian when he was 16 weeks old. So I want to say when he was about two or three months old, we had this old recliner in our house. And that's the chair that I would always sit in whenever I was crocheting because back then diamond painting didn't exist and I would crochet all day. And so I would go to sit down and he would jump up in the chair. And this is how, this is the first time I ever heard him speak. And so I was like, you know, hey dog, get out of my chair. And he's like looking at me and I'm like, I know you understand what I'm saying, dog, get out of my chair. Again, he just sits and looks at me and I'm like, what's wrong with this dog? <laughs> move dog and he just sits there and looks at me then he does something that scares the crap out of me he's like no i was like what the flip y'all i thought for sure i was in some kind of a movie or a cartoon this dog just said no clearest day at me i had to call my daddy okay and be like this dog just talked to me and he's like what dog i'm like this dog just talked to me like this dog just told me no and he's like what dog i'm like i just got a new dog and the dog told me no like he straight up like, I've started feeling for a while there, I started feeling like that guy from the WB. Remember that guy with the frog? And the frog would talk and sing and dance for him, but nobody else? That's what I felt like because he wouldn't, Killian, even now, it, it takes a lot for you to get him to talk. So when he does, it's very short and he's just like, ah, rah, rah, rah. and I'm just like, well, what? what does that even mean? Like, that's not even tangible words, sir. And if you tell him it's not tangible words, usually it's when he tells you no. And I'm like, well, forget you too, sir. Like, what the heck? All right, sorry. I need to get something to drink. So I finally get him to talk to me, but he won't talk to my, anybody else. Like, my neighbor would come over, and her and I would hang out all the time because, of course, our houses are connected and we were friends. So her and I, would, she would come outside with me, and we would sit and smoke cigarettes because at that time I smoked cigarettes. And... She would be like, you know, hey, you know, what's up with the new dog? How's the new dog doing? And I'm like, this dog is driving me nuts. Killian would sit up for hours. Like the first month that I had Killian, I, I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I was just sending that dog right back on down to that goddamn on breeder. Because even starting from the first night he came home. Now, I told you guys, and if I haven't, when I, had, when I gave birth to each one of my children, right, they all came home sleeping through the night. Now, remember, Orion was in the NICU for a month or a week. And Maggie came home right away like she was supposed to. So did Minna. Well, no, me and Minna stayed in the hospital a few more days. But all three of my children slept through the night when they got home. So they would eat and then go to sleep. Killian? No. Killian was... Killian was the universe's way of reminding me what childbirth was supposed to be like. Because he would he would not settle down to go to sleep. He was always trying to run around. He was always into everything. You couldn't leave out like strings of any sort because he would definitely get into them. And so he was like, he, he would bark. He would growl. He would jump on, on and off my bed. And I'm like, what is wrong? This dog is a crackhead. Like, what is wrong with this? He would get the zoomies late at night to the point where I was like, all right, we need to buy him a cage. Now, all of my dogs have kennels. I don't put them in the kennel because they're trained to be outside of the kennel. So they can be outside of the kennel like when I leave or something. And if I do have to lock up one of them, they all get locked up. Because if not, the other two will try to make the other one, like will help the other one escape. So if I lock one up, I have to lock all of them up. So when 
Achilles or Achillean was, I want to say, two or three months old. Just this one particular night, he would not settle down. He would not go to sleep. I put him on the bed with me to see if he'd just go to sleep. He would not sit still. He just wanted to go back and forth. I put him on the floor. He wouldn't go back and forth. If I opened up the hallway door, he would run up and down the hallway. Uh, the door to the hallway, I meant, not the hallway door. But he would run up and down the hallway. He was just all over, like, uh, he was like a very energetic two-year-old his entire, like, puppy life. That's the best way I can describe it. He wouldn't sleep. He was very picky about what he ate. He didn't like eating with other, the other two dogs around, so he would wait till the other do two dogs weren't around. And he wouldn't just eat food. That was the other weird thing. He wouldn't just eat food. No, no. He would take the whole bowl, right? And then he would move it to another room. And then he would eat. And I'm like, what you do that for? So I had to train this dog to not only eat with other dogs around, which he still doesn't do. Uh, every once in a while, I'll catch him and Daisy eating at the same time, but for the most part, he eats by himself. Like he he will wait for her to be done if she is eating, and then he will go up and eat. He will he will not eat like he he won't eat his dog food with some other dog. Like it just is not a thing. So. He he was a very trying puppy, and I thought numerous times I was going to send him back to the breeder because I could not... Training him was an absolute nightmare, which is why I can do... He does have basic training. He can sit, stay, roll over, and if I call him, sometimes if you're lucky, he will listen and come to you. So most of the times, he's not coming to you, so don't don't waste your breath. Um, he also learned, like, very early on... When he was a puppy, uh, my neighbor had three kids like I did, except for she had a baby and then two uh, older one that was what she had one the same age as Minna, one kid the same age as Maggie, and then she just had a baby like right before I left, like a year or so before I left, she had another baby. And I was like, good riddance to you because there's no way in hell. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, all right, all right. She, she, when she got to meet the puppy for the first time, she was all excited and Killy and did this weird thing, which I didn't think anything of it at first. But then as the time went on, I realized that this dog has a weird quirk when it comes to meeting people where most dogs will go up and sniff a person's hand and then like lick it or something to be like, Hey, look, I approve of you. You can pet me. Killy or Killian, which I'm going to keep calling him Killies because I have Killies, but Killian has this bad habit of he will jump on you, but he's not jumping, like, jumping, jumping up on you. He gives you hugs. So, like, he will get to you. So this is you standing up, just minding your business. And Killian's just a dog. And if he sees a new person he hasn't met before, he jumps up and just holds on to them. And I'm like, what the, what the flip are you doing? And he will do that. And then he rubs his head on them, like his head is itchy. And I'm like, oh, sweet Lord, baby Jesus. He did that to her the first time he met her. And then I realized shortly after that, anytime he would meet someone, that's how he greeted them. He would greet, I'm like, this dog has a Southern heart, Jesus. Um, and if you don't know what that means, people from the South, we don't do a lot of handshaking. We hug, okay? We're, we're, we're huggers. Um, so when he started doing that, I was like, he, he definitely has an, a Southern heart because uh, we, we's the ones that love to hug. So... Uh, he was, he was just a weird little dog, but he, he had all the energy in the world, all over the place, all the time. He would jump out the fence to go greet the neighbor when he come, he came home, and then would jump back in the fence whenever he was done. All right. So if you hear noises, again, the ferrets are out, they're running around. It's the afternoon on Monday. So Killian, he was just a very energetic puppy. Now he's calmed down, obviously, since he got neutered. Now, the neutering story is the last story I'm going to tell you about Kill I think I'm going to tell you about Killian. Um, <clears throat> so, we decided to get the pups neutered and not breed them. One, because there's enough dogs on this earth that I don't need to breed my own dogs. I get, all the I get people all the time that ask me about breeding the dogs. And unfortunately, that is not why they were... That's, that's not why I got them, okay? 
So I didn't purchase the dogs to breed them. I purchased them for protection and because I've always wanted a dog. So growing up, I had dogs all the time. We always had a dog, but the dogs were never allowed in the house. So they were always chained up to something outside. And I always thought that was cruel and I never wanted to have a dog like that. I always wanted a dog that was in the house. So I always said when I got older, I was gonna have a bunch of dogs that lived in the house. Now I should have thought this through um, because like kid me was like having a bunch of big dogs in your house all at once is a great idea. Adult me is like, is something wrong with kid me? Can someone check on her? Cause she's not okay. Um, it's not too bad because the dogs are very calm in the house. They don't tend to get too rowdy. Um, every once in a while they'll want to play. And when they play, uh, that's when they get a little rowdy. But Killian, he's calmed down and... We decided, you know, yeah, we, we're going to go ahead and get them neutered because if we're not going to breed them, there's no need of get it, having any accidents. And I've already, I think I've already told you guys the story about Daisy and the first time she went into heat and I didn't know anything about female dogs and what happens to them when they go into heat. And when I found out very quickly what happened and I was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that again. So I immediately got the dogs fixed. And so the day I went to go get Killian fixed because they had to go separately i couldn't do it on the same day that's a lot to take care of because when they come out of the like when they come out of the vet they're still coming out of anesthesia and i didn't want to deal with two dopey dogs so i was like we're gonna do them separately so daisy went first and then a week later killian went just to make sure daisy didn't have any complications or anything like that hers went fine killian on our way to going to the vet's office it's like he knew we were going and he I had this little Nissan Versa. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Google is free. Uh, Nissan Versa is this little clown car, right? And the reason I call it a clown car is because that's what it looked like. Mine was a black and gray Nissan Versa. The inside was gray. The outside was black. And I'm 6'1". This car looked like... It was a very short, stout car. So it did have four doors at least, but it was a very tiny car for someone who's so big. I'm a big girl. When I, when I say big, I mean like tall. So I'm sitting there and I think I just finished all those. I literally pulled out eight because I knew I would be on it for a while and I think I finished all the eights. If you didn't notice, I finished a section this morning when I was watching the trial and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, let me go ahead and do this whipping chat while I feel like diamond painting. Yay, again, I told y'all. I usually feel like diamond painting on whipping chat days. So, watch. I left some eights out down here, didn't I? I don't see any. Let's find number five. Five, five, five. So, we're in the car with Killian. And he's on his leash. And he's also buckled into the seat. Now, if you didn't know, they make these cool little harnesses, right? And the harness, you can put on your dog and behind, like, on the side of it. Like, it kind of had a strap on it. And you could snap it into a seat belt so the dog couldn't move. We were in the car all of, I don't know, hmm, 30 seconds. Like, I didn't even make it to the stop sign at the end of my street. And he had already snapped that thing in half. Like, he literally snapped it to the point where I had to go and get someone to take the buckle out of the seat. Because he had just snapped it. He didn't even care. Like, he, he just hulked it right out. And so I was like, great, and I got to fix that. Well, then we're standing in traffic. And I'm sitting there and I see the trash truck is what's holding up traffic. And I'm like, oh my God, like we're going to, we're going to be late to his appointment if I don't get around this trash truck. Well, I guess Killian must have heard it. And at that point in time, we had a trash man that would always come to the house and bring the dog's treats. Like he would hear the dogs barking and he would come up to the fence and give the dogs treats. So the dogs absolutely loved him. And we welcome this behavior because we used to have a bag of doggy treats that sat outside the fence and said, please come pet the, feel free to pet the dogs. And so people would come up all the time with their little kids and everything and they would bring the dogs little uh, bones and stuff like that. But it was only stuff that was outside of the fence that we gave them. We had to tell a couple of people, you know, don't bring them beef jerky sticks. They're dogs, not humans. They're not rotten. macho man Randy Savage over here. So like, no, don't give them beef jerky sticks. So... Mostly, that's mostly because though, because uh, Killian and Daisy can't handle people food. If you give them people food, it's like, it's like what most people go through when they don't have a gallbladder and they eat something they're not supposed to, how they'll immediately run to the bathroom. That's what it's like for Daisy and Killian if you give them people food. Now, Achilles, 
My dad feeds that dog chips and beef sticks and all kinds of snacks all the time. Like, he makes him his own beef jerky. Like, that's how spoiled that poor dog is. But my dad is the first to tell you that my mom spoils that dog worse than he does, apparently. Anyways, moving right along. So, we're in the car, and I'm, I'm freaking out because I'm like, we're going to be late to this appointment. And I'm always a day late and a dollar short. I, gosh, dog it. Hold on a second. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, my God. The multi-placer thing. Anyways. So... We're in the car. The trash truck, I believe, is where I stopped, where the trash truck was in our way. Oh, that's number eight. That's not number five. The trash truck was in our way, and I was like, oh, my God. We, you know, we're never going to get through. We're going to be late. Well, then, I guess, I don't know why, all of a sudden, like, Killian kept really, like, going for my window. Like, he kept pawing at my window. And I didn't think anything of it at first, because at first, he was just hitting it with his paw. Well, then, as he heard the trash truck, he knew what that sound meant. So then he started really going at my window. And I'm like, what are you doing? Essentially, he broke my window. And when I say broke it, I don't mean he shattered the glass. No, no. He broke the motor in it, pushing it down. So he essentially put his paw, and I had it open and well, uh, enough that he can stick his little head out of it. But he couldn't stick his body out. And so essentially, he just climbed up on it and started like pushing down on it to the point where he broke the mechanism in the window that made it go up and down and jumped out of the car and took off down the street. And I was like sitting, literally sitting in standstill traffic and my dog takes off and I'm like, oh my God. So I get out of the car and I start running. Like I had to put my four ways on, of course. And then I go out and I go start running to see where he got off to. Here, this mother chicken done ran up to the, the trash guy. The trash guy is like, hey, I recognize this dog. And I'm running, and I'm yelling his name, and the guy sees me. He goes, hey, hey, ha your dog. I'm like, thank you so much for stopping him. He apparently heard you, and I guess he really wanted to come see you. And he goes, oh, hey, buddy, did you want your bone? He literally was chasing the trash man down for the dog bone. That's when I realized how greedy my dog was. He was about that life. He was about life or death. It was risk it for the biscuit, if so to say. Um, so he, he did all that for a dog biscuit. And I'm like, I hope you enjoyed your trip. So then we go to the vet. We get there maybe two minutes late. I was very happy about that. So we get to the vet and I asked him to check him over because he had just jumped out of the car and ran down the street to go catch the trash guy to get a dog bone. So they check him over. They said he was all right. So they were like, you know, he's good for us to do surgery on. Just come back in a few hours. Y'all, I don't think I've ever seen that dog so angry at me in my entire life. When I went to go pick him up from getting his... uh from getting neutered oh my god this dog was shooting daggers at me for days would not come to me would if i if he saw my car keys he would go running he didn't want to eat or drink anything for the first day that he got home and i was just like oh now the dog hates me ever since then i feel like killian has had this vendetta against me because he'll do little stupid stuff like if he sees me walking up the stairs he'll lay on the stair in front of me like he's trying to trip me up and don't let it be dark, because that's worked once where he, it was dark and I didn't see him on the stairs because he's black and white. And his top half is black. The, his belly is white. So it's not like, you know, I saw a white spot somewhere. No, no. Um, when he lays down, he's all black. So I'm just like, oh, well, let me walk up these stairs real quick before I step on this whole dog. And I fell down the stairs, twisted my ankle doing that. And like, literally, it's like this dog has never forgiven me for getting him neutered. And, like, every once in a while, he'll do something. Like, I feel like he's the Stewie of dogs. Every once in a while, I feel like he's trying to do something to hurt me. But uh, he, he warmed up to me after a while. He still he still messes with me every once in a while. But for the most part, he does a pretty good job. He actually just went in the other day to get his... What did he get? He got a rabies shot. And he did perfectly fine. He didn't make any weird noises. He wasn't jumping all, acting all crazy. He literally sat there and loved up on all the nurses at the veterinarian's office. They all walked him to the back room. They were like checking him over. They were asking about his face. We got the antibiotic stuff for his face. He has, He's on a new antibiotic for his face. They want to see if that works before they do an allergy test to see exactly what he's allergic to. And they were like, let's see if this antibiotic works. If this antibiotic works, then more than likely we know what he's allergic to and I'm like all right because now it's just an allergy that they're thinking it's not just the zinc it's the zinc on top of whatever else is bothering him so uh yeah so that's that's the story of Killian Killian Jones that is how we got Killian 
and him and all his shenanigans. Um, and then the ferrets, we just got the ferrets one day because I, I knew I could con Mr. Coffee into getting them because we had just talked about getting ferrets. And Mr. Coffee is very easy to con into doing things that I want him to do. Especially if I know he wants it too, but he just, Mr. Coffee has a weird thing, like he doesn't like doing or getting things for himself. And I kind of gave him the notion that, you know, we could get ferrets. That would be fun. Everybody would love them. Everybody does love them. Fun? Um, <laughs> they're a handful at times. They're a handful at times. Like right now, currently, uh, Gumball is stealing dog food because that's a thing. Um, why is he still in, first, it's, it's a very all natural food and, uh, the vet says that as long as the dog food doesn't have corn or something like that in it, the, the ferret should be fine. Just try to stop them when I see them. The problem is Gumball is the greedy one. So he's always eating the freaking dog food. It's, it's, it's a never ending battle. And the moment, of course, the moment I go to try to put the dog food up while the ferrets are out, which is most of the day. That's when the dogs get their hungriest and they're like, I want to eat now. Now, my dog's free feet, which means I just let their food out and they eat whenever they feel like it. Because who am I to tell a dog when they can and can't eat? It's a whole dog. Like, you're on the job 24-7. I'm not going to give you a meal time. Um, and that's just how it works in my house. I, I know plenty of people who do, you know, their dog has, you know, certain times of day that they eat. My dog's just free feed. Um, but yeah, so the fares were easy. I just, we did, I, I con, we were... What were, you, what were we doing? And in, in, I think we were in Minot or Bismarck or something. And I knew there was, we, oh, we had went to the zoo. We had taken the kids to the zoo last year. And they said there was a pet store. And I conned Mr. Coffee into going because I was like, I want to go see the animals. And it'd be nice because we just came from the zoo to go see some other animals. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's what you want to do. Show them more, more animals in cages. Mr. Coffee doesn't like zoos very much, apparently. And so I was like, oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's such a weird guy. But uh, I conned him in going to the pet store and there was only two ferrets left. And one, a lady had came in right after us and she wanted to buy Gumball. But she didn't want Anais. She said Anais was too small. She probably wouldn't make it. And I was like, well, what the hell does that mean? And the lady's like, the small ones always die, really. Like, as soon as you leave the store. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Anna's working on what? eight months now that she's been with us, she, she's been fine. She's little, but she's fine. Um, and no, we haven't had the ferrets for a month or for a year. They just happened to turn a year old the day after Killian turns seven. I think he's, no, he's six. He's six. Daisy's going to be seven this year. Daisy's birthday's in December. So yeah, so that is the story of the Aminals. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about our weekend. The weekend was great. Um, minus Maggie and I got into it this weekend because Maggie needs to learn how to clean her room. Now, I've cleaned Maggie's room with her numerous times. And for some reason, it only lasts for about mm, two minutes. Does anybody else have a child that they, no matter how much they fuss, cuss, muss at these kids, they always, they like, they, it's like they're allergic to the cleanliness of a room. Maggie... Like, we've, we've gone as far as taking her toys, taking all the stuff out of her room. No matter what we do, she finds a way to make a mess. So this weekend, Friday night, actually, right after live, I go, let's go upstairs and get this room cleaned. She goes, okay. So she goes upstairs. I'm still downstairs getting something. I go back upstairs, and it looked like she had started, like, actually cleaning it. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to check on you here in a little bit. And, you know, you, you get your room cleaned. Problem was, I fell asleep. When I woke up to go upstairs to go to bed, she was still sitting there chilling on the floor, but she had fallen asleep. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to let her clean it tomorrow because, I'm, you know, no big deal. Problem was she had just spent the previous weekend, all weekend in her room cleaning it because she refuses to clean it. She says it's boring. Well, why do I have to clean this up by myself? Can Orion help me? Orion didn't help you make the mess. That's why you got to clean it by yourself. Like, he didn't come in here and mess up all your stuff and then just leave you hanging. No, you made this mess. You clean it up. So she decided that she was going to play around. She was going to listen to stories on the Echo. She was going to, you know, play with her dolls. And this is how it always happens. Well, then I checked it once and it, it looked like she was getting it clean. It looked pretty good. And I was like, you only have a couple more things to do. Now, literally, all she had to do was put the balls in the ball bin 
and put her clothes in the laundry. Y'all, I went up three hours later. This girl had done nothing. She actually messed the room up more because she started playing with toys. And I was like, oh my God. And so essentially, I got really tired of it. And I was like, look, listen, you are now officially on punishment. So I took her TV, her Xbox, all her electronics and everything. I took them. And I was like, when you can be a little bit more responsible, you can earn your stuff back. Being responsible. She's like, well, how do I do that? I'm like, keeping your room clean. And she's like, I can't do that. That's impossible. It's not impossible. You got this. <laughs> but uh, she kept her room clean. And I was like, she asked, could she go outside? And I was like, is your room clean? And she goes, yes. So I get up, I go check her room and I go, okay, the room is still clean. It had been about three hours since she had woken up and the room was still clean. So I was like, that's a big feat for you. So yes, you can go outside. So she goes outside. She's playing outside. She's outside most of the day because it was almost 70 degrees outside. So she decided to go outside with her little friends. No big deal. She has a little walkie talkie. So when my kids go outside, they have cell phones, but I don't like the idea that if they lose a cell phone, they're losing like their contact with the outside world and all that. Like, you know, I just paid a bunch of money for that and you lost it type deal because Maggie can't Maggie can't hold water if you gave her a bucket. OK, um, so we decided to go this route. We got the kids walkie talkies. And so I keep one with me and they each have one. So anytime they're not in my sight, I can still talk to them. Now, if, it, if they're in the house then no, we have the Echo devices for that. But if they're outside, like right now, Maggie is currently outside, she has a walkie-talkie. And so what happens is when she wants to ask me a question, instead of me having to get off the couch every 30 seconds, she'll just use the walkie-talkie to message me. So I'm sitting there, and she walkies me, and she's like, Mommy, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working on something for the channel. What's up? And she's like, can I have a sleepover at our house? No, you just, no, we're, we're not doing that. You can't keep your room clean. I'm sorry, you can't have a sleepover. Well, she goes, no, at my friend's house. And I'm like, hold up, you want to have a sleepover? I don't make it make sense. I don't understand. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> so she asked, could she have a sleepover with her friends? And me and Mr. Coffee were talking about it. And I was like, look, Maggie is nine years old. Maggie needs to know what it's like to not be in the house all the time. My kids uh, are very much homebodies. And it's not that I don't mind that they're homebodies. I don't really mind it too much. Like, if they had the option to go do something fun outside or stay inside, they, of course, would pick outside. But for the most part, like, you know, they like being indoors because this is where all of our stuff is. Again, this is what I try, try, keep trying to tell y'all. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, uh, right, we'll let you go. So she goes, yay. She goes, can you help me pack a bag? And I was like, all right. So we packed her some, you know, some night clothes and something to take a shower with. Or I told her, no, come home and take a shower because uh, the house that she was going to stay the night at is literally two houses away from mine. So I was like, no, you you, you come home to take a shower. You don't need to leave the house or anything like that. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, or take a shower at somebody else's house. Like, that's the one thing that we're not about to do. So I was like, you'll have to come back the next day and take a shower. I mean, because she's only a couple of houses away. I think she can hold off until she got home to get a shower. So I was like, you can hold off. And so I packed her, her bag and we walked her up to the people's house. And we know these neighbors, like they're really nice people. They have uh, one of the kids is one of the girls that keeps getting into it with Maggie. And the other one is the one that invited Maggie, which is the one that's Maggie's age. So she was, of course, staying with the little girl that's her age. And so we walked her up and we talked to the parents for a little bit. And me and Mr. Coffee came back. And I'm looking around the house for something. And I come back into the living room and I'm like, it's too quiet. And he's like, what? I'm like, it's too quiet. Why is it so quiet in here? And Orion comes downstairs and I was like, oh, hey, Orion, I forgot you were here. Now, Orion's been hanging out with his friends too. So I, I forgot he was in the house still because when he's up there, look, he don't ever come down. Like he'll come down for dinner and stuff. But for the most part, Orion ain't coming out of that room. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? And he goes, Where's Maggie? And I'm like, Maggie went to a sleepover. Now, when it comes to my kids, they're not used to being separated. Um, they might fight like cats and dogs now, but they are not used to being separated. Like they, they very much have like this, almost like a twin mentality. They like to be together at all times. And so Orion was like, you know, should I go grab Maggie? You know, it's almost getting dark out. And I'm like, no. Uh, she's staying the night at her friend's house tonight. And he's like, hold up, what? And I was like, she's staying the night at her friend's house. He goes, why? Can I go over too? And I'm like, no, you can't go over 
this is her friend. Just like you go stay the night at your friend's house. And he had stayed the night at his friend's house. And he was like, you know, well, when is she coming back home? And I'm like, she'll be back home tomorrow. Because it was Saturday. So, like, she obviously couldn't stay over there that long. They still have school. Um, the kids get out of school next Wednesday? Is it next Wednesday? I think it's next Wednesday. Either next Wednesday or next Thursday. Um, so I was like, you know, it's not like she can, you know, stay over there for a long period of time. She has school. And then we decided that, uh, she was going to come back in the morning so that she could take her medicine. So she left right after she took it after dinner. And then in the morning, she'll eat breakfast at, you know, their house. And then she would come home with her stuff in the afternoon. Now, is that how it happened? No. She, she stayed the night. And I was worried because I gave her her walkie-talkie and everything. And I've heard stories of people, like, they'll go to... Like, do you remember your first sleepover? Put that down in the comments. Um, I don't remember having sleepovers when I was little. I might have, like, had sleepovers with family. Like, my family would come sleep over. Like, my cousins and stuff. I had one cousin that I would go to her house all the time and she would come to mine. But for the most part, we would go to her house. And that's the only real sleepover I remember having. Except for with... Uh, there was one other one with my friend Natasha, but she passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but those are the only real sleepovers I remember. So I was like, um, I was like, all kids really need to experience a sleepover. So Mr. Or Orion is just kind of sitting there with this sad look on his face. And I'm like, what's wrong, dude? He goes, I don't like it when she's out of the house. And I'm like, why? I'm like, the sad part is, when she's in the house, it's not like they're playing together. It's just the fact that she's there. And he was very anxious, I could tell. Like, very jittery all night. And he came down and hung out with us. We played tic-tac-toe a few times. And we, we watched a movie with him. And, you know, he was just really in his feels about the fact that his sister just left the house to go to a sleepover. And I felt really bad because I was like, I kind of feel the same way too. And Mr. Coffee just kept looking at me and be like, what's wrong? I'm like my baby and he's like oh my god you're the one that told her to go i'm like i know but she needs to learn he goes then you can't complain that she's gone i'm like yes i can i can do whatever i want he just spent the entire mr coffee literally spent the entire night just telling me that uh <laughs> he's like well you're the one that told her to go I, I i know this it's not that i like it like people do things that they don't like all the time to make other people happy like me telling maggie that she can go to a sleepover now, so she, we didn't go to bed until like 5.30. Why? Because I couldn't sleep because one of my children wasn't in the house. We did give her her walkie-talkie in case she wanted to call and try to come back home or something. But nah, she was straight. Not only that, they went to bed like hella early. And Maggie isn't used to going to bed that early. Or she is during school nights. But on the weekends, we let them stay up a little bit later. And so when she called or when she walkied us at like, 9 30 i was like you're going to bed at 9 30 on a saturday all right bet these be those same people that'd be like my child's up at 5 a.m every day yeah because you're keeping them on a school schedule so they think they're supposed to wake up hella early my kids aren't on a school schedule i can tell you that right now they're i'm at this point it's just pure chaos in my house and they just drop like flies whenever they're tired um usually we try to have them go to bed on the school night at nine o'clock but uh yeah getting all these fives i'm trying to do the symbols that have the most stuff on them um i also got to talk to my neighbor this weekend he this the guy that who lives in the house attached to ours now this neighbor if you think i can talk a lot this neighbor is the chatty kathy okay like he he can jabber and so you try to you know you don't we don't try to avoid him but if we're in a rush we do try to make sure that you know we don't get caught up talking to him because you'll be sitting there forever and I don't remember what happened. Oh, he was asking me because he has bunnies and his bunnies just had babies. And I was like, oh, dear God. And so he was asking us, do we want a bunny? And I'm like, we have ferrets. And he goes, hold on, what? And I'm like, we we have ferrets. And he's like, like real ferrets? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, where? So I open up my front door and I show him. And I'm like, I show him the cage. And I'm like, right there, we have ferrets. And he goes, oh, okay. So what's up with ferrets? And I'm like, ferrets will eat bunnies and he's like oh i'm like yeah we can't have a bunny i'm like i'm lucky these dogs are still alive um for those folks wondering yes the dogs do still get along with the ferrets they don't i mean i, I don't even call it getting along at this point they just deal with it one because now anais likes to cuddle up with daisy 
and Gumball just likes playing with Killian. The problem is Killian's too big, so like they just end up stomping around my house all day. But I was like, yeah, we we can't have you know bunnies. We have ferrets, and they will eat the ferrets. And I showed him the the frozen food that we got. We just got it in like a month or so ago. It's rabbit. And I was like, yeah, so they've had, the t they know what rabbit tastes like and smells like. So if you brought one of them over here, I'm pretty sure it would get eaten. So he's like, oh yeah, okay, I guess I can't give you a bunny. I'm like, no. He goes, what am I supposed to do with eight bunnies? W why do you have two bunnies? Why do you have two bunnies of the opposite sex? Like, I don't know what to tell you. They're not my, that's, that's a you problem, sir. And so we're just sitting outside talking, you know, chattering about. And I'm trying to hurry up and finish talking to him because it is that, like 20 minutes in, I realized I was in the middle of recording a video and I just abandoned the video <laughs> to talk to the neighbor. The video is literally sitting up on my phone and the phone, the battery life on this phone is awesome because I had to have been talking to that neighbor guy for about an hour. My phone was at 94% when I first started making videos and I don't know what it was at when I paused the video, but all I do know is uh, by the time I got back upstairs, the phone was at I want to say 63% and I was like I was out there for an hour and when you're when you hit the record button on most phones it, if you're actually recording something and, and I don't know if it happens on iPhone or not but on Android you can pause your video so I paused it to go downstairs to see what Daisy was barking at to find out that it was the neighbor and then I got talking to him and uh when I came back upstairs the phone hadn't died it was still like paused and I was just like, oh, snap, I forgot about that. So I go over and look and to see if I needed to go charge it before I finish recording the video. Because you don't want to record a video and then, you know, halfway through your video decides that it's going to shut off because your phone battery died. So I went to go check to see if I needed to charge it. It was at 60 some odd percent. So I was able to finish up the last little bit of unboxings that I had to do for this week. And I was like, yes. So, uh, yeah, there was that. And then me and Mr. Coffee had a late night date night where we sat and talked about changes that I want to make with the channel and stuff like that uh some of the stuff that we had been talking about changing for a while um we even talked about possibly getting mr coffee uh like having him share my office with me and so like he would have a computer and a desk in the office so that whenever i go live he can still put in his commentary he's still not sure about that just because he like he he much prefers sitting on the couch but uh i'm trying to talk him into it but yeah so it's just been a crazy weekend, and I, I was so happy when he was he suggested late night date night. The problem with late night date night is, though, when you're extremely tired all the time because your anemia is bad, um, late night date night doesn't always work out the way it usually does. So what ended up happening was I ended up falling asleep, and he woke me up and was like, all right, it's time to go get food. And so this was Saturday night, so I was like, well, you, you I'll order it, and you go pick it up. So... We did that, and we watched a movie, and it was just really nice to spend time with Mr. Coffee this weekend. We were supposed to go out and do some stuff with the kids this weekend, but uh, plans changed when Mr. Coffee got called into work. This is one of the other reasons why we don't get to go out and do much of anything, because Mr. Coffee's on call 24-7, so at any time, if they need him to go work on a tool or something, he has to stop what he's doing to go into work. The good thing about that is, is even if he's there... For more than 10 minutes, he he gets paid, you know, a couple of hours worth of a day instead of just, just the time he was there. So that makes it nice. Um, my neighbors also let me know that they didn't renew his lease and he's scared that they're trying to boot him out. And I'm like, you should have renewed your, your lease like two months ago. Because they caught us, what they were doing when they gave us the, the notice that your rent was going up was they put a notice on your door and they did it at the 90 day mark before your, your uh, lease is due to be renewed. Well, his was due to be renewed, or is due to be renewed in August, and they haven't gotten it to him yet. So I'm like, just give it a little bit more time. And he goes, I don't think they're going to renew it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, they will. Sometimes it might take them a little bit longer. Um, plus, we're just in May anyways. So I was like, you know, I don't want you freaking out or anything. So he comes, the neighbor guy was like, you know, can I see the ferrets? And I was like, you, oh, you want to see the ferrets? And he's like, yeah. So he comes into the house. He walked, even though I showed him maybe like 10 minutes while I was talking to him, he walks right past, which people do this all the time. They walk right past the ferret cage and go, where's the ferrets? You walked right past them. What do you, what do you mean? He's like, hold up, they don't smell. N no, I try telling people this all the time. The bad misconception that ferrets smell is because you don't, 
if, if you're not cleaning out their litter box and stuff properly, they will have a little bit of an odor to them. But for the most part, like they have their own like animal smell, like a dog has a dog smell, but it's not anything like, you know, your whole house has to smell like, you know, ferret. So I was like, yeah, no, they don't really have uh, a pungent smell, but they, you know, they have a little bit of a smell to them because they are still animals. And he's like, oh my God, they're so chill. And then Gumball decided he was going to yeet himself out the guy's arms. Did I finish all that already? I'm at the first crow. So like the shadow crow. And then there's the other crow up there. I'm super excited to get this done. But with that said, folks, I think I'm done for the day. I have to go get some stuff done. But I want to say thank you so much for coming and joining me with my whip and chat. I do greatly appreciate it. And if you don't mind, please hit that like button on your way out. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this one, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. But with that said, I must now bid you adieu. But not for reminding you that it's hard out here in these crafty streets. So please remember to stay caffeinated, stay crafty, and stay safe. And always try to remember to be kind to others, be courteous, and always be cool. Bye, guys!